Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Worms RC. Some of you may know if you've watched my previous episodes that I was talking about some of the accessories I have for this truck, and one of them is this fancy snowplow that I've got set on the front of here. I just wanted to do a quick video to talk about how I have this snowplow mounted and why. So if you've seen my previous videos, you'll recall that I mentioned this truck actually has the one inch TRX4 lift kit in it. And I've also done my own homemade um, body lift, which is just about half an inch of lift. And because of that height difference from what it would have been stock, this snow plow that I bought would not have worked. And I just thought I'd like to do a little video and just kind of show people that it is possible to still be able to have the option of a snow plow even though your truck's lifted. So to give you a quick walkthrough of what I've done here, you'll see I've got it just kind of mounted up here on the front and you'll also see some odds and ends pieces here that weren't stock. So this snow plow I bought off of Amazon. Um, I think it was around 75 bucks when I bought it. Um, if you recall from my previous videos, like as I said, this truck has its body lift in it. Um, because of that, my bumper height wouldn't have matched to the body, so I've modified things. So to show you what I've done here, let's pull the body off quick. I moved my front bumper mount to the back, which worked out to be the perfect height for my aftermarket back bumper to match to the body at its new body lift height. I took the one from the back and I moved it up here to the front, which you can kind of see it's tucked down in here. And the reason I did that is because this rear bumper bracket was a drop bracket. So it actually dropped down below the frame. And because of my body lift and my front bumper having to be moved up, that means I wasn't gonna actually use the body, or the, excuse me, the bumper mount um, holes at all. So by putting it back on here onto the front, it actually dropped it down. So it's the perfect height for my snow plow mount to go into. Now I know you can't really see it because I've got a skid plate right here that's mounted in the way, but I'm actually going to show it as I take this off here in just a second. So you can kind of see how it's possible because you'll note, like I said, this has the one inch suspension lift, plus it has a half inch body lift and I'm running 2.2 tires. So it, it's sitting a full inch and a little bit above the height that it should have been at before. And you can see that my snow plow is making full contact to the surface in front of me so that I can actually push some snow with it. Uh, if you check out some of my short videos, you'll so see that I was actually out playing with it in the snow earlier today. Um, okay, so I don't have a servo setup on here. I'm actually running it off of my winch. So what I've done is I've got my winch set up on a wireless um, remote controller. And I'll just demonstrate here if I can. That I can lift it up and down. Um, the only thing that I had for an issue was I found that because I'm doing it this way with the winch, these springs were just a little bit too much force for the winch to try and pull just because it's on such a steep angle up. So what I did was I made my own little homemade pulley and I mounted it across here using an existing hole in the actual plow mount. Down here you can see there's a screw right in the center of my little creation here. That's a stock hole. I just made up these pieces out of old Meccano uh, from the old Meccano sets to make up this pulley. And then I just doubled it back to itself by going above itself on the bar here. So it actually works as basically like using a um, snatch block just to double the strength of the winch which works out pretty well like I said it it'll lift it and lower it back down again nicely which works fine for me um, as you can see here my 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 snow plow is mounted very very closely to my front bumper and I did that on purpose because there's so much lift in the truck and this is actually sitting down lower than what it should have been like the frame height should have been down like let's say more like this height 
which would have put all this force down here. So it would have been a lot closer to the ground. So the reason I've done this way is because when I actually get pressure back against here, it was starting to, to twist everything this way. So I, I left it close to the bumper here so it had something to bump into. And then I made up these rails. Again, I used an existing bolt hole and then I just went straight up this way. And the bolts that I used to mount that rear bumper mount into the front of this thing, I just oversized the holes and put in slightly larger bolts. And then I left them a little bit long so they'd be sticking out through the frame rail so that when I wanna put this thing on or take it off, it's very easy. I just slip this over top of this bolt, do up this nut, and then I've got this added strength so that when this gets a front impact, it's lifting and shoving against the frame instead of just trying to snap off that um, plastic bumper mount that's that these are into. So I'll give you a quick walkthrough here as I take this thing off. So again, like I said, I run it off of a winch. Uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, my winch, I have a wireless control box. Obviously I have my fancy little remote, which works pretty well but I ran mine over to a nine volt battery instead of going into the truck wiring. I'm sure there's plenty of other options. This was just something I thought was simple and easy. And then I just tuck this in here when I'm out to play. Um, I found it works out pretty well for me. So I'll go ahead and get the uh, winch undone here. And then I'll show you guys how quick and easy I've made it so that this can come off. I really wanted something that was simple and easy. There's times when I want to go play in the snow with this thing or or sometimes I just want it on for looks or I'll play with it in a little bit of dirt or something. Um, but it's not not in everything, or excuse me, not in all the time kind of thing. It's just once in a while I like to play with it. It looks cool, it's scale. Um, it, it looks a little silly on the front end of here just because I'm running wheel spacers so my tires sit out quite a bit wider than the actual blade but it, it does work and it looks cool okay so now we've got the winch undone off of there pretty simple and easy I, one thing I like about that over the servo was I don't have to play around with a different channel on my remote or unhooking the wires and stuff when I want to use it or not use it this way I just literally unhook my cable roll it up and ta-da I'm pretty much done so now we'll slip over to here where I've got these little um, bolts that I was talking about stick out of the frame rail. I'll just undo these nuts here quick. I got one on this side, one on the other side. Just drop the nut and then literally I just pull this out and drop it down off of the frame. So what I did was when I put these bolts in here, I just left the uh, bolts a little bit long, put the nuts on, they just stay there. That's just an extra nut that goes on just when I'm using the plow. So that's that one. Just give me a second here and I'll just knock off this other side if I can real quick. Come on. There we go, now it's coming off. There, pull that one off. And then all we have to do is go up here to the stock bumper mount. Right there, you can see it's sitting in there. And then just undo the stock bumper bolts that would normally hold your bumper on. That's all the top of this goes into. And as quick as I get this off, I'll get a front view here so you can actually see um, how it worked out. And it actually worked out very well with the skid plate as well. The skid plates I got are also from Amazon. And the um, because of the way I have this bumper set up, what I did was I took the front one, put it on the back, and put the back one on the front. And it worked out perfect, so there's just enough room for the snow plow to slip onto here. And because of that, it actually kind of helps to reinforce the frame a little bit from like that bumper mounts, just plastic that's in there. So it kind of helps to take out some of that force that goes against it. So now I'm just gonna ever so carefully slide it out of here. And just like that, my plow's off. Now, like I said, if you're running stock height, um, you're probably fine with just the bumper mount set up. I just didn't like it for what I was doing. I thought I wanted to get a little bit more force against it because I don't really have anything flat that I'm trying to clean off with it. Like I don't have anything paved for a driveway or anything. It's just gravel. So I thought that way any extra force to the 
to the front of the plow would just transfer up to the frame and and lift the front wheels and kind of just take some of the force instead of just breaking the plastic bumper mount off when this kind of torqued. So I'll get you a front view here if I can. Ugh, come here, you. If you look in this way, you can see what I mean about because that's that rear bumper bracket mounted to the front, it drops down below the bumper height. So it's, it's actually perfect. You can see my skid plate's at the perfect height so it just slips into there. Everything just fits together. And like I said, being so, cl so close to the bumper, so close to the skid plate, that kind of helps to take out some of that downward force uh, from the plastic so that I don't break it. Um, and like I said, running that one on the front was the perfect drop to be able to get my plow to still work and go down flat to the surface that I'm trying to um, make it do, right? I want it to plow the snow. I don't want it to just go over top of the snow. It kind of defeats the purpose. And like I said, I wanted something that was quick attached so that it was easy that I could just hook up, play if I wanted to, take it back off if I don't want to. Um, I did some quick videos today just out playing in the snow with it and it was kind of a crappy day. It was really heavy, wet snow, so it didn't push like it normally would in nice light snow. So I'm glad that it's quick attached. I can take it off, keep playing, and enjoy myself, and then just put it back on when I want to use it. Um, yeah, to wrap it up, like I said, all I did to move it, move this to the front, if you've ever tried it, you will see that it doesn't want to quite fit. Um, just because of the way the frame does this curvature right here it kind of curves up more whereas the back is just straight all i did was forced it in gently as far as i could and then just oversized the holes i put one bolt in this way and one bolt in this way just so that i had the stud sticking out to be able to put my reinforcement brackets onto um, and like i said it worked out very well for my application um, yeah, I, I highly recommend the snowplow as far as something different to add to the scale realism, make it something else that your truck can do. Like it's fun to go out and just play in the snow, but sometimes you wish you could do a little bit of something else. So I can appreciate that. And I, I'm glad I was able to find a way to make it work with my truck. Um, Cause you can see like right now, I'm just kind of roughly holding it here for where it should be sitting. And then if this was in the stock bumper mount bracket, it would have been up here for height. And you could see that even with all this lift, tires, everything, that you're out of down. There's no more, that's almost a solid inch that this wouldn't have been able to actually make contact and do anything with. So doing it the way I have has worked out very well to actually have a way of doing it. Um, I guess one more thing that I will say about running it with the winch style, I can only do one spring up on this. If I do up both, it will lift it, but only a little bit. And then the spring tension against the winch is just too much. So it kind of, it kind of sucks for that. But to be honest with the one spring, I haven't had any issues. It's got enough downforce that the blade stays down. As a matter of fact, sometimes I think it's too much. I kind of wish that it would skip over the little imperfections in the ground just to help stop you from literally getting stopped all the time. Every time you hit something that's not quite flat, it just dead stops and runs out of traction. So I might change these out for a lighter spring later. Um, I haven't used it much. I've used it probably two or three times just playing around with. Like I said, it's cool. It kind of looks cool on there. Um, I'm going to try it out a little bit more in the dirt this summer and just see if I can kind of use it like a little bulldozer to move some stuff around. But uh, anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Like I said, if you've got a lift in your TRX4 or if you're thinking about it, I do highly recommend it just for the ground clearance. It looks cool. It's easier to run your bigger tires. And here's a way that you can still use your snowplow and not have to lose out on that because your truck's lifted. So like I said, I hope this was helpful and I hope somebody's got some ideas and yeah as always please like and subscribe if you like these videos and uh we'll see you again next week thank you